the long-nosed bat has an even longer secret. <laughs> this is such a long secret. <laughs> A dry, barren wasteland seems like the kind of place most creatures would avoid, but the desert offers rare opportunities to those who have the tools to capitalize on the hidden bounty. But even if you do, there are challenges to overcome, and one misstep might mean the end. One aerial mammal may have just what it takes to make America's Southwest their home, but strange animals with niche tools in desolate places are part of the beauty of life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. And today we're talking about an animal that has gotten some bad press recently, but hopefully some cool facts will turn that around. More oh, on really? that later. I don't know about this bad press, so... Well, we're talking about a bat. Oh, oh. So, bats I guess in general. it's not... We're not just talking about bats in general, we're talking about a specific one. Or at least a group of different specific ones. Uh, but, yeah, bats have gotten some bad press lately. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I can't imagine it's this particular bat. No, because it's this one. Well, what bat are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the lesser long-nosed bat. This is the second time, uh, not in a row, but in the last couple episodes that we've talked about something that has a superlative. We talked about the least weasel, and now this is yeah. the lesser long-nosed bat. Lesser and least usually just means small, like there's another one that's a similar species that's bigger. But lesser means that there's probably something that's also smaller that's the least long-nosed bat. That <laughs> might be, yeah. Uh, so well, anyway, little bat This work This with. is not a Chinese bat, so it is, or an East Asian bat, so it's not to blame for the current situation. Correct, correct. Uh, Technically, even the other bats... That are East Asian are not to blame. <laughs> just gets so mad at the bats for Some being people, there. I mean, they do live disgusting lifestyles. So, but God made them that way. That's true. To be disgusting. Yeah. Actually, this listen. Should... What you make a disgusting animal, and somebody decides to eat it. Whose fault is it? You know. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't be eating bats. Yeah, there's a lot of issues that go into that issue, but. But the so I don't want to necessarily place the blame on anyone <laughs> in particular. Uh, it's just gross. I don't want to eat a bat. Uh, I don't want to yoke anybody's yak, but bats are gross. Um, yeah. <laughs> but the lesser long-nosed bat, that's a, that's a mouthful. I think we have some other names that we could call it. Uh, some of the names that I didn't give it, that somebody else gave it, are the Sanborn's long-nosed bat, which is also a mouthful. And I don't know who Sanborn is. Um, <laughs> there's also the, the Mexican long nosed bat, which should not be confused with the Mexican long tongued bat, which we'll probably talk about with, later, which has a longer nose that it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. I think we were just talking about this before, uh, starting recording that the Mexican long nosed bat has a longer tongue than the Mexican long tongued bat. And the Mexican long tongued bat has a longer nose than the Mexican long nose bat. From what I've seen, that's what it looks like. I might be wrong because there's a lot of... Because the the species are very similar. They live in a similar area. We're really talking about all of them that live in this, this region. And they're, the pictures might be mixed up on the internet. Like they might be mislabeled. Yeah, they're all. Um, if you type in one or the other, you're going to get pictures of both. Yeah, so you know what? Don't quote me on the length of the noses because I've ba I'm basing that on pictures I've seen, so they but, could be mislabeled. But these are all really long names. Instead, we can call it the leptomaniac or the ugly flat mouse. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ugly, dirty flat mouse also works. Um, <laughs> But uh, actually, all of the we're going to talk about the the genus here in a second. But um, all, batologists, there's a word for that. I know there is. Um, but they, there is. They they would call all the bats from this uh, this genus leptos, so leptomaniacs. Huh. Um. So let, let's taxonomize this for a second, just for a second, 
maybe more seconds because there's a lot of big words here. Um, the, the kingdom, you know it, you love it, you're in it, and that kingdom is, of course, Animalia. The phylum is Chordata. The class is Mammalia. We're back to mammals, but these are special kinds of mammals. All grouped into an order called Chiroptera, which is true flying mammals. That doesn't include flying squirrels because they don't actually f- fly, they glide. These are. Well, based on that. What do you think the name of a person that studies bats is? Uh, chiroptologist. Yeah, chiro- chiropterologist. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have to conclude the whole thing. All right. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. An ich- ichthyologist um, studies sharks. Studies icky so, stuff. Yeah, they study they study nasty sharks. Um. Yeah, so this thing, the, this order, Chiroptera, is not just bats, but also flying foxes, uh, which are distinct from bats and also enormous. Look up pictures of flying foxes. I didn't realize how big they got. In zoos, they usually have smaller ones, but these guys can get up to the size of like medium to large dogs. Huh. It's crazy. Um, the family, here we go, Phylos. Stomidae. Philostomidae. My favorite character from Atlantis. Philo Batch. <laughs> Philo Bats. <laughs> Philo Bats. That's that that's the worst Batman, I think, not Val Kilmer's. Um Alright, so the genus, uh, like I said, they're called Leptos. This is uh Leptonicterus. Lepto le- Leptonicterus. Um, and the species is Yerbabuene. Yerbabuene. Your Babadook. <laughs> is your Babadook doing okay? Your Bob. Your Babunoe. Okay. So this the um, the binomial nomenclature is Leptonicterus. Your Babuene. It's quite a, quite quite a name. Quite a binomial name. Yes. Um, and since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show. Critic groups. The part of the show where I ask you a question, Joe. And that question is the same every single time, and that is what is the name of a group of this animal? And we're talking about bats. So, Joe, what is the collective noun, term of entry, or name for a group of bats? Is it A, a flock? B, a swarm, C, a spire, or D, a cloud. Okay, swarm, spire, cloud. What was the first one? Flock. I'm going to go with swarm. Flock seems too... It seems like too white hat for a for a bat. Too white hat. <laughs> These are bats we're talking about. A swarm is the black hat version of a flock. Of a flock, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that your final um, answer? Yeah. It's incorrect. The answer was actually cloud. Okay. <laughs> a Which... cloud of bats. I guess if you see it from a distance, it might look like a cloud. It does. I've, I, um. At UF in Gainesville, University of Florida, they have a bat house. And if you go there during the summer, uh, as the sun is setting, all of the bats leave at the exact same time. And there's thousands of bats that leave this bat house. And it looks like a cloud, for sure. It's pretty cr- crazy spectacle to watch. And also, you're really happy about it because you're usually... It's the middle of summer in the swamp, and you're getting bitten up by mosquitoes. And these guys love to eat mosquitoes. Not the lesser oh. long-nosed bat, but the bats that are in at UF. So That's good. All right. So, yeah. A cloud of bats. Would you like to hear what it looks like? Sure. All right. So, you know what a bat looks like. Hopefully, most people know what a bat looks like. It's there, like- there's a lot of variation. If you look up just like weird bats, to just Google weird bats, there's a lot of weird looking animals you didn't know existed. I'll have to look up weird bats then. Put that on my list. Let me, let me just look it up and describe some to you. Okay. You, you, I, I must have sent you some though before. I feel like I have. Like they look like little goblins and one has like a, like a frilly hat on its head. 
Oh, you are right. One looks like a camel. The ha- the hammerhead bat looks like a camel. Uh, wow. Yeah, this is um. One looks like it's been stung by multiple bees. This there's one that looks just straight up alien. Uh, the visored bat. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of weird bats here. Uh, Batman definitely had a lot of de- interesting creative design choices to pick from, and he picked <laughs> basically the the most boring one. He basically picked a flying fox. Yeah, pretty much. Um, well, so, I mean, there's an archetypal, archetypical bat, which is just like a smush-faced mouse um, that has giant wings. The family Phyllostomidae uh, is leaf-nosed bats. So when you picture a bat that has that smushed, fleshy, looks like the inside of a dog's ear on the... <laughs> on yep. the front of its face um triangular nose that's the leaf nosed bat so that's what we're dealing with here it has bristly brown fur beady black eyes large gray wings um it has shortish pointy elf ears not all bats some bats have huge ears um some are rounded but these are relatively short for bats and also they're pointy so while it has this smushed triangular nose uh, the long nosed bat, believe it or not, has a longer nose than most leaf nosed bats. It's kind of like a f- more of a flying fox ish snout, but still at the very end of that is a smushed leaf nose. Other than that, it's 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 a pretty. St- st- I don't I can't say standard bat anymore now that I'm looking at this host <laughs> of pictures. Um, but there, yeah, you know you. There's there's a standard bat that's in everybody's mind before they look at this picture. <laughs> uh, but how, so how big is it? Would you like to would you like to know how big it is? Sure, uh, sure. <laughs> that brings us to the listener's favorite part of the show. Uh, welcome to the beloved measure of segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show that when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also a part of the show that's introduced by you when you send in the audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We have a new measure up intro as we return to the Nantahala Forest saga. <laughs> My favorite saga. This season two is great. <laughs> uh, well, I'll play this and you can just tell us who it is. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Measure up, y'all. <laughs> short, decidedly southern short and sweet that's uh it's josh that's josh i wouldn't i it's been a while since i've heard him speak but that that was a he's that got was a he's got a bit of a southern accent anyway and he can he can turn it on uh dial 10 whenever he wants to he but his the t- like his voice just sounded completely different like his like even the the it s- sounded deeper in this he's got a pretty deep voice Oh, anyway, it's been a that's while. my that was my brother in law, Josh. By the way, but uh, thanks, Josh, for that measure up, short, sweet, to the point. We know what you were after. <laughs> yes, I like we like a good accent. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Put on or legitimate, but let's get right into it. Body length, uh, they are eight centimeters or three point one inches. How many bats go into the length of a leaf? On the largest species of agave plant. It's really specific. Would you like a hint? Because here it comes. The species is agave antrovirens, and it's a native to Oaxa, Pueblo, and Veracruz uh, in Mexico. Those are all Mexican states. I'm imagining like a big banana leaf. That sounds. Do you know what a, an agave is? I've heard it's it before. Like, I think it's a it, yogurt flavor. It's like, um, it's kind of like an aloe. I'm thinking plant. of guava. In terms of plant shape, it looks like an aloe plant, like you know the spiky leaves coming straight out of the ground, looking thing. Uh huh. Oh, is this the one that's like really big? That I saw these in Greece. They can be big. This one is big. Big, like floppy, floppy stalks. Oh, so those can get to be like. Like you know, seven or eight feet, and it's three point one inches. We're gonna say three inches for easy division or multiplication. 
no division, um, which means four of them go into a foot. And I said eight feet. So eight times four is 32. I'm gonna say a little bit less, so I'll say 30 because it was 3.1 inches. No, yes, thir 30. 30 bats, final answer? Yeah. The correct answer is 57 bats. Oh. A single succulent leaf is about 14 feet and 9 inches. Or 4.50 meters. That is a really long leaf, and these guys are really small. Like yeah. Three inches. It's just like, that's so cute. <laughs> They're smaller bats, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about weight. They're 15, uh, between 15 and 25 grams. Or 0 0.53 and 0 0.88 ounces. Perfect. Let's go with 25 grams, the upper end. How many bats go into the weight of a total agave antro atroverens plant? You picked a hard one to say. Atroverens. Agave atroverens. Oh, goodness. What, no hint? You're not going to interrupt me? Oh, I do have a hint. <laughs> It takes many years, but the plant eventually forms a large peduncle me that can form. Me too. <laughs> but I'm going to say this thing live is. Uh... Oh wait, finish your hint. Oh yeah, it, so it can form that the peduncle can be more than forty feet high and sprouts flowers. Forty feet high. I'm going to say this thing weighs. I mean, it's a forty foot, but essentially tree. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to say this thing weighs. I don't. I think the weight I have is without that, but I. Oh really? That's that's very, It takes years for it to like sprout. That it's like an adult by the time that happens. Still, I would say if it's like a tree, I would say it's in like thousands of pounds. But if it's just the top part, right? It's just what? It's just the top part. No. No. This is a succulent plant. Can you imagine this? Look at a picture of it. Look up a picture of it. The majority of it is on the is on the ground. Yeah, I've definitely see the seen these. And when I went to South Africa, I saw, I saw one that was like insanely tall. I was like, that's the biggest aloe plant I've ever seen. But it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't aloe. But you're saying forty feet tall. Okay, fine, whatever. I'll say three hundred and fifty pounds. What would you say if the peduncle was included? Probably like twenty five hundred pounds. Go with that. <laughs> is that hit number two? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 40,000 ounces, and this is 0. 0.8. 0. 0.88 ounces. 0. 0.88. I'm going to say 35,200. 35,200 bats? Yes. Final answer? Yes. That would have been correct if you had doubled it. Uh, <laughs> the correct answer is 70, well, oh, closer, closer to correct. 72,574 bats. The plant can be as heavy as two tons. That, yeah, wow. I, I was picturing a tree-ish thing, and um, that, yeah, I was going to be like, that's in the thousands of pounds. But, yeah, that's all, that more about agave later. Um, yeah, good. well, briefly. <laughs> okay, uh, but let's talk about where it lives. Okay. Um, it is called the Mexican long-nosed bat, so it is no surprise that its range includes... Uh, the, the the fair country of Mexico, but its range goes as north as Southern California, New Mexico, and Arizona, and as south as El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala. Uh, so it kind of spans Southern North America and uh, a good portion of Central America. Uh, and because of that, it loves semi-arid grasslands and forests, and it likes uh, warmer conditions for sure. Its diet consists mostly of nectar and pollen. Um, so unlike some other bats uh, that eat insects or blood, uh, this is this just this is a nice bat. Just eats <laughs> nectar and and uh, and uh, pollinates plants. The so here's some fast facts before we get to the major fact. They can live for up to eight years in the wild, uh, and like most bats, they use echolocation in order to find their way around pitch black caves and to avoid predators 
Uh, and if you don't know what echolocation is, it means that they it can emit a high frequency sound that their ears are specifically sensitive and tuned to. So when the sound waves bounce off of objects in the cave and bounce back to the bat's ear, uh, it gets an idea of what is out there lurking in the darkness. And for bats that eat insects, uh, it's just amazing because they can send out this frequency and pinpoint where a mosquito is near them and then eat it. Um, and uh, dolphins use this and we we use this kind of technology in our submarines. Sonar? Yes, sonar. Which is... It stands know. for Stuff Bats Do. Yep. Do you know that? Mm-hmm. It's, uh... That's false. It's the Latin spelling. <laughs> yeah. I wish I knew what it actually spelled. Stuff... Or stood for. Other neat animals require. Repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff other neat animals require is, is what sonar stands for in my mind. <laughs> um, all right. So the, the lesser long-nosed bat can uh they can tolerate high temperatures because you know they live in mexico and arizona and places where it gets really hot they can uh survive up to 106 degrees fahrenheit which is pretty darn hot Uh, and this is thanks to a low metabolic rate but because of that low metabolic rate they can't heat themselves up very easily and can't survive in low temperatures because they don't hibernate like a lot of mammals do when it gets cold, they will die if it stays below 50 degrees Fahrenheit for too long. Good thing they live in the desert. Yeah, but the desert gets cold. Can get cold at night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't know what but they But how do. long is too long? I don't. 12 hours or like 30 days? For like a month, yeah. I don't know. Um, but if it if the atmosphere, if it like drops to 50 degrees for a while, then a lot of them die off. That's all I know. Uh, It also has, the lesser long-nosed bat has a high wing loading, which I had to look up what this was called. Um, And that's the weight of any flying object or animal divided by the area of its wings. So uh, if it's heavier and has smaller wings, then it has a high wing loading. And if it's lighter and has larger wings, then it has a low wing loading. And because the lesser long-nosed bat has a high wing loading, meaning that it's heavier and has smaller wings, it can fly long distances easier, more energy efficient, um, but it can't maneuver very well, can't change directions. And which is fine because it's not trying to ki- uh, catch flying insects and things like that. Um, but it is trying to dodge things like birds this is a little True. guy so he, he's uh kind of vulnerable there but uh that's all i got okie dokie well let's get into the major fact uh the long-nosed bat has an even longer secret a, lo- a tongue <laughs> this is such a long it- secret <laughs> <laughs> it's a t- it's his tongue uh it's as long as his body and he's not the only one there are several species that live where he lives that that uh, can have tongues that range from a third, which is the case for the long-tongued bat, to th- more than the length of their body. Uh, many of them live in Central and South America and up into the uh, southwestern United States. Several long-tongued bat species live in arid deserts um, where they get most of their nutrition from flowering desert plants. Some travel back and forth between Mexico, like you said. They they had this long, they had this big range uh, that that goes all the way down to South America and up to the U.S. Um, but sing, single species can actually travel that distance. Um, so they thanks to their high wing drink, loading, right? <laughs> true. Uh, they drink the nectar from cactus flower blooms. Um, and they, they can even visit as many as 100 flowers each day. I wrote wow. each, each year on my notes, and that's way less impressive. Well, the answer that means is- they take some days off, but that's not true. <laughs> it's, it's 100 a day. I think that means they, they only take more than half the year yeah, they off. sip a flower every, every third day. <laughs> so like, like hummingbirds, they specialize in hovering so as to position 
their bodies just right to get the nectar without careening into a cactus spike, which is interesting because they are not as maneuverable. So they must have put all their skill points into hovering and not as much into maneuvering while moving. Well, they just can't. While they're flying in one direction, it's more difficult for them to immediately switch directions. Uh, But I'm sure while they're hovering, they're fine. So if you look... If you look at their tongue close up, it looks kind of like a pipe cleaner with a lot of little barbs that come off it like bristles. It's kind of These bristles are, they're called papillae. Do you remember what other animal we said had papillae? I feel like lots of animals have papillae, but I can't think of any right now. We mentioned it, we mentioned it in this episode actually. Nope, I can't think of it. (laughs) The correct answer is camel. The camel has papillae in their mouths. Oh, yeah. So that they can eat cactuses. They can eat cactuses. Yeah. (laughs) Interesting. Related, but different. They're, they're, They're tackling different challenges that are closely related. Um, so their bristly tongues act as like, kind of like a mop to suck up and clean out every bit of nectar they can get out of these hardy desert plants, flowers. Which, if you look at these, like, cactus flowers, a lot of them are, like, long cylinders, almost. Where you have to, you know, you need a long pipe cleaner to get out, get to the bottom of. Uh, We'll get to the bottom of this flower. Um, (laughs) Well, it's, 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 this bat is specifically designed to get this nectar out. <laughs> uh, there's some joke in there between Batman being the world's greatest detective and him getting to the bottom of this flower. And having I, having I, having the uh, the tool for absolutely everything. <laughs> I, I just don't have the tools to put it together. Um, so... Their tongues um, extend in a way that's different than ours, than ours do. Um, their tongues fill with blood and oh. inflate like a wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man. Oh. Um, their, their blood balloon tongues are attached down in their chest and extend deep into elongated flowers from cacti, uh, from cactus plants, right? So as they feed, their fur gets covered in pollen. Like bees, they are essentially, they're, they're very important in pollinating desert plant species. Um, and like we were talking about, one of the plants they help pollinate is agave, which is used to make, what do you think? First guess. Sorry, I blacked out after you said lo- blood balloon tongue. <laughs> well, do you know what agave is used to make? Um, hats? No, <laughs> no. Um, it's a beverage. Uh, beer? <laughs> I don't no. Know. Uh, tequila. Oh, da, da, I didn't da, know da, that. Da, da, da. Yeah, it's used to make tequila. So without bats, we might not have the coronavirus, but we also might not have tequila. So worth it? I don't know. <laughs> Do with that information what you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, these little guys are important for one of the grossest liquors. The one with the one that uh is famous for having a worm at the bottom of it. <laughs> it's not all all of it. Not all of it does, right? No, this no, no. And it's not one. even tequila. It's 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 some other alcohol that's very similar to tequila. What? So you lied to me just now. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. Uh, uh but some people like tequila i think it's nasty i think all take you know taking a shot of any just pure liquor is nasty um so uh, yeah it's all nasty i would say for sure well if you don't like the flavor of like rubbing alcohol then you're gonna have a bad time with any liquor that's absolutely true and (laughs) and i fall directly smack in the middle of that category (laughs) okay good good (laughs) So is that all you got? That is all I got. All right. That was the lesser long-nosed bat. So for you out there in Podcastia, unfurl your secret long blood balloon tongue. Sip some of that good, good nectar. 
And remember to use high-pitched screeches to find your way in, in the dark, like the lesser long-nosed bat here in Life, Death, and Taxonomy. This is the beginning of a new season, which means that it's time to say our thanks to those who helped and supported us through the last few months of podcasting. First of all, a special thanks to Carlos's wife, Bibby, and my fiancé, Johanna, the poor baby, for their support in giving up time for us to record and work on the show. That's a Seinfeld reference. Thanks to the Poole family for their consistent encouragement and engagement. It really makes this show that much more fun for us to do. Thank you to everyone that sent in a Measure Up intro, especially Carlos's family members that put up with him putting his phone in their faces to capture their wonderful sound bites. And thank you to those that have left us a review, including Jeremiah4810 on Apple Podcasts that said, these guys put out a high quality podcast about some of Earth's strangest animals. Entertaining and educational. Nice job. We appreciate your kind words. Also, that's a strange out of context life verse. Most people go for like a to Jeremiah 2911, but I'm not about to yoke your yak for going for a deep cut. Thank you to Hello and No on Apple Podcasts that said, love this show, always keeps me interested and always look forward to new episodes. Can't recommend it enough. Tabby from your new best friends podcast. I'll have to give that show a listen. Who can't use some new best friends? Well, that's a wrap on this season, but don't worry. The next season starts to today, actually, because you just heard the first episode of it. Uh, look for the next episode in your feed exactly one week from today. As always, thanks for listening. My favorite in the world podcast. <laughs> Did you add the blood balloon thing just now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought like you had written blood balloon and I had also written blood, blood balloon. No, at first I, I, I wrote, um, as soon as when you called it, this is the long secret. <laughs> I put in secret long tongue and then you said blood balloon and I was like, well, I'm just going to I'm just going to add adjectives to this. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a long secret. Uh did did you get the hemojibis? <laughs> yeah. uh, wow, how I've never heard that before. Yes. The hema hemojibis. We didn't say that in the other bad episode. I thought we said hemojibis. No, but ever since like episode five when we did the horny toad lizard or whatever, we've been, yeah, hemojibis. There we go.